In this video, we will talk about the Inquisition, and in particular, we'll focus on the Spanish one. When we hear the word Inquisition, we immediately think of deaths, torture, bigotry, intolerance, control, and fear. These elements undoubtedly existed, and that has led to explanations of this phenomenon from a somewhat sensationalist and often distorted point of view. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Our chief weapon is surprise. Surprise and fear. Fear and surprise are two weapons. Our fear and surprise and ruthless efficiency are three weapons. Our fear and surprise and ruthless efficiency and an almost fanatical devotion to the Pope are four. No. <laughs> Amongst our weapons. In this video, we will debunk a number of commonly accepted beliefs, most of the time accepted due to a bombardment of misinformation. At the end of the video, we will include a small bibliography for anyone who wants to approach this topic in a more rigorous manner. The Spanish Tribunal of the Holy Office of the Inquisition was an institution that was created in 1478 by the Catholic monarchs to maintain religious unity within their kingdoms and fight against apostasy and later against heresy. That is, against against any deviation from the true faith. The tribunal lasted about 350 years. At the end of the 18th century, the Inquisition entered a period of decline, becoming an outmoded institution that sailed against the liberal winds that were blowing and finally died of old age in the 19th century. The inquisitorial institution, however, is not a Spanish invention as many people think, but inevitably people associate it with Spain. There is an explanation for this as it is part of Spanish black legend, which we will see later. The Inquisition was born in France. Catharism is the doctrine of the Cathars, or Albigenses, named after the city of Albi, agnostic religious movement that spread throughout Western Europe in the mid-10th century and managed to take root around the 12th century. It was influenced by Manichaeism, with its two opposing forces, good and evil, represented by the Jesus-Satan duality. The Catholic Church regarded the Cathar doctrine as heretical, and thus the medieval inquisition was born. Established in 1184 by Papal Bull as an instrument to end Cathar heresy. Faced with the growing influence and extent of the Cathars, the church ended up calling on the support of the French crown in order to achieve violent eradication of the Cathars from 1209 through the Albigensian Crusade. The Inquisition failed because it did not depend on central authority but was administered by local bishops. For this reason, Pope Gregory IX created the Pontifical Inquisition or Papal Inquisition in 1231. It was led by him, entrusting the company to the Dominican Mendicant Order, founded by Santo Domingo de Guzman. The Pontifical Inquisition worked mostly in the south of France and in northern Italy. In Spain, it existed in the crown of Aragon, but not in the crown of Castile. So how was the Spanish Inquisition born? Let us go back centuries before the Catholic kings created the Court of the Holy Office. For centuries, in the Middle Ages, there had been a relatively peaceful coexistence amongst the kingdoms of the Iberian Peninsula, although not without incidents between Christians, Muslims and Jews. The Jews were a minority group. At the end of the 14th century, there was, in some parts of Spain, a wave of anti-Jewish violence due to the envy that their success aroused. The Jews served as a scapegoat to channel the discontent of a hungry society and were watched zealously as the Jewish class prospered, amongst other things, in the areas of trade and money lending. The massacres of 1391 in cities such as Seville, Valencia, Barcelona and Cordoba were especially bloody. Therefore, during the 15th century, there was a forced conversion to Christianity of the remaining Jews to escape death. The old Christians, the lifelong Christians, suspected that many of these conversions were not sincere. To discover and wipe out the false converts, the Catholic monarchs decided to have the Inquisition introduced in Castile and the Pope consented in 1478 by enacting a papal bull. Years later, the institution was also established in the crown of Aragon. The first auto da fe was held in Seville in 1481, where six people were burned at the stake. The inquisitorial machinery started rolling strongly. Among the victims in the first year was Diego Susson, a Judeo convert who amassed a great fortune and, according to one account, planned an uprising against the Tribunal of the Holy Office. Naturally, the fortunes of the so-called Judaics were confiscated and passed into the hands of the church. So what exactly 
was an auto de fe. An auto de fe was a public event organized by the Inquisition. What began as a religious act to atone for sins and pass justice without much pomp ended up being a popular spectacle, more or less like a party or a bullfight. The autos de fe were gaining in solemnity and duration. People flocked to see them, even the king himself. Today, the Inquisition is very unpopular, but at that time, auto de fe were extremely popular, especially in the 16th century. In reality, no one was executed during the act itself, but those sentenced to death, who appeared dressed with the traditional San Benito, were handed over to the secular arm charged with executing the sentence in a nearby location in the afternoon or evening without ceremonial theatrics and without the presence of the authorities. They were mounted on donkeys and led into fire. Those who managed to escape from the bonfire by having fled or died during interrogation were burned in effigy. That is, a life-sized mannequin which represented them was burnt. As the number of inquisitors increased, it became necessary to appoint a general inquisitor for the crown of Castile and Aragon to coordinate the activities of the body. In 1483, the Dominican friar, Thomas of Torquemada was appointed for this office. With the creation of this post, the direction of the Holy Office was centralized through just one person. The appointment was made by the Pope, although in practice, it was the kings who nominated the candidate. The Jewish problem was not solved with the Inquisition, but rather further aggravated by it. Finally, in 1492, the Catholic monarchs decreed the expulsion of all Jews from Spain through the Edict of Granada, with the aim according to the decree of preventing them from continuing to influence the Judeo-converts who embraced Christianity, the so-called New Christians. Other countries in Europe, such as France and England, had carried out similar expulsions. The reasons were not only religious. There was also an attempt to restore social order. The Jews were given a deadline and allowed to emigrate with virtually all of their possessions. The kings would stop collecting taxes from this minority. However, the most dramatic loss was human capital. Jews were allowed to convert to the Catholic faith if they did not want to give up their lives in Spain, about half of them, some 50,000 Jews according to the most reliable sources. The Judeo-converts were called Maranos, which translates to something like dirty pigs in Spanish. Many of them continued to practice their religion clandestinely. In the early years of the Holy Office, the Inquisitors paid no attention to heresy in general. They were particularly interested in keeping an eye on the Judeo-converts. Muslims continued to enjoy religion religious freedom, but only for a short time. When the Inquisitors arrived in a city, they read the Edict of Faith, which was a very long list of all heretical beliefs and behavior. Those who had committed heresy were then invited to confess or to denounce others. Until the year 1500, there was a grace period, a span between 30 or 40 days, during which the heretic would not be punished with severe penalties, usually a fine paid in cash was enough. Thousands of converts voluntarily presented themselves to the inquisitors. Some no longer practiced their religion in secret. Fear overtook them. Later, the harsh persecution of converts who had not been taken in the grace period began, and that was a real reign of terror. The greatest activity of the Holy Office was concentrated in the early years, where real horrors were carried out without convincing evidence, often they with the only inconsistent testimonies based on rumors. Although, it must be said that the vast majority of those interrogated during the 350 years of the Holy Office would manage to keep their lives. Less than 2% would die at the stake. Of course, the total number of actual executions is a far cry from that commonly believed. The Inquisition didn't kill tens of millions of people, not even millions. We know this for a fact because the Spanish Inquisition had a huge bureaucratic apparatus and a huge number of documents have been preserved of their proceeds, allowing historians to thoroughly investigate the subject. In 1517, the church was divided in two by Protestant reform. Charles I of Spain would end up succeeding the Catholic monarchs and would end up inheriting the titles of his father, Philip the Handsome, and from Philip's wife, Joanna the Mad, becoming emperor and the most powerful man on the planet. He also emerged as an advocate of Catholic Christianity, declaring Luther a heretic. The Protestants, however, had a very powerful weapon for fighting the most powerful man in the world, propaganda, with Gutenberg's printing press 
as an ally. It was precisely because of the propaganda launched by a Protestant warlord, William of Orange, that the Spanish Inquisition acquired its reputation as an inhuman and monstrous court, even though the religious hatred was installed in all corners of Europe. The Book of Martyrs of 1554, written by another Protestant, John Fox, also helped to increase the Spanish black legend, thanks in part to the 50 engravings of torture and ill treatment that illustrated it. Fox dedicated an entire chapter to the Spanish Inquisition, the execrable Inquisition of Spain. The Inquisition, after a period of tranquility, focused more on pursuing the heretical practices of Protestants and Moriscos, and other crimes such as blasphemy, bigamy, sodomy, or witchcraft. It should be clarified that the Moriscos were Muslims who were forced to convert to Christianity. The Spanish Inquisition looked at centuries later certainly seems barbarous to us. Of course, this is undeniable. But the time has come to compare some data and to disprove some beliefs. The inquisitorial courts as we have seen had fewer guarantees than today's courts. It was the inmate who had to confess to an alleged crime reported by someone else, a secret crime that was not disclosed to the detainee. However, they were more guaranteed than any other court of their time. The inmate had far more procedural guarantees than in ordinary civil courts. Even if it doesn't appear that way, this was a huge break through for the time. In inquisitorial prisons, there was also better treatment than in ordinary, secular prisons. In fact, many of those detained in civilian prisons blasphemed in order to be judged by the court of the Holy Office just to be transferred to their other prisons, which were more pleasant and humane than the others. The Inquisition passed to the American colonies throughout the Spanish territories, but their actions were not directed against the indigenous, but rather against the same profile of people who were being targeted in Europe. Converts, Protestants, blasphemers, etc. The Spanish Inquisition resorted to torture very rarely, often with a doctor present and always under the supervision of an inquisitor who was ordered to avoid permanent damage. This contrasts with the brutal torture of civil authorities across Europe at that time. The development of torture was scrupulously recorded by secretaries. Confessions obtained during the torment were not valid on their own and had to be ratified within 24 hours. In addition, the Holy Office had a procedural manual that prohibited many forms of torture used elsewhere in Europe. In fact, many of the sadistic tortures attributed to the Spanish Inquisition are simply not true. Torture methods aimed at digging out a confession, as was also common in civil courts, in most cases were as follows. 1. The portro, or rack, consisted of laying the inmate on a board with straps to be tightened. 2. The toca, a soaked cloth was inserted into the mouth and the nose was covered to create the feeling of suffocation. And 3. The garucha, the inmate was hung by the wrists with his hands tied behind his back. Scholar Henry Kamen states that, in Europe between the 15th and 18th centuries, for every hundred death sentences issued by ordinary courts, the Inquisition issued only one. Nor was there ever in Spain this European hysteria with the witch hunt, a phenomenon that occurred in both Catholic and Protestant countries. The Spanish Inquisition hardly ever pursued witchcraft, typical of lower class women lacking in education and therefore having little influence in society. In this respect, the case of the Spanish inquisitor Aldonzo de Salazar de Frias, whose fame was mainly due to his participation in the court of the Spanish Inquisition that judged the case of the witches of Zugaramurdi in 1610, was a precedent. During the sentencing, and in particular in the subsequent review of the case, he stood out for his opposition to giving credibility to the theories of witchcraft. His exhaustive report, sent to the Supreme Council, which was the highest body of the institution, formed the basis for the Spanish inquisitorial jurisprudence to be skeptical of the reality of witchcraft and to be very reluctant to file complaints on this subject. Historian Geoffrey Parker believes that in the 350 years of the existence of the Spanish Inquisition, some 5,000 deaths took place. Henry Kamen puts the figure at about 3,000. In a similar period, Germany burned 25,000 witches, and throughout the rest of Europe, they burned around 50,000. The Spanish Inquisition, by comparison, only burned 59 women for witchcraft. Protestants defamed Catholics, and especially Spaniards, for their evil and fearsome inquisition, while at the same time they burned women accused of witchcraft at a dizzying pace. The intolerance of Protestantism was no less tyrannical than that blamed on Catholicism. In fact, 
Protestant terror, as we have just seen, was much more violent and claimed many more victims. In conclusion, it must be noted that the court of the Holy Inquisition was not only Spanish. We have already talked about the medieval French Inquisition set up to fight the Cathars. Also, during the modern age, the Portuguese and Roman Inquisitions would arise in Portugal and Italy. Rome is famous for condemning Giordano Bruno to the stake and for investigating Galileo Galilei and his theories, although Galileo himself was never condemned to death as many people think. The Inquisition was certainly terrible, but not as terrible as Spain's rivals would have liked us to believe.